Hello guys, welcome to the final part of my Dora diorama build video. You may remember that in the last video we left the Dora like this, with most parts dry fitted and with a sort of basic terrain base but nothing painted. In this video we're going to finish the Dora, we're going to get that terrain sorted out and we're going to see what it looks like once it's all together. But before I start, just a reminder that this Dora model kit and several of the tools which were used to create it were very kindly supplied by Scale Models HQ. They have a good range of products and some competitive prices too, so I'd thoroughly recommend that you check out their website. And there's a link in the description below. Okay, let's get started with the build. There wasn't a lot of building that still needed to be done after the last video, but there were these um, rails at the back which I use for the lifts to load the ammunition onto the Dora. Unfortunately, these parts were slightly warped, but luckily they have enough anchor points onto the model that you can more or less straighten them out. And basically these are used for those, um, those lifts to go up and down from ground level where the shells are loaded up to the gun platform at the top of the Dora. The other big addition that I had to do, and there are lots and lots of these on the Dora, is these handrails. I left them off until this point for obvious reasons, they're very delicate and they're going to get damaged otherwise. I also left these on the sprues for painting because it would be much easier than spray painting from all kinds of angles while they were uh, attached to the Dora itself. You will notice though that there are a few patches that I've missed with the paint, but I do come back to those and touch them up later on. Before I put the walkways in place, I did use a small amount of metallic paint to simulate wear to those walkways. Hobby Boss do give us the nice uh, pattern, the tread pattern on a lot of these walkways, and so dry brushing them just kind of highlights that pattern a bit. Next up, and with the parts still as separate sub-assemblies, I used a pin wash. Because of course the Dora is dark grey, German grey, I had to use a very dark wash, in this case black. This is a black uh, panel line wash from um, Ammo by MIG, I think. The effect looks very strong here in the video, but it does tone down massively as it dries. And in fact, in some places it's barely visible, but there is nevertheless a difference. So that panel line wash was used in various recesses, areas where I wanted shadows, and in a few places on the walkways as well, just to sort of suggest dirt and grime and so on. At that point I could start to put the Dora together for good. I did consider just dry fitting it, with a view to it being easier to transport if I ever needed to move it. But to be honest the fit, especially the rear component, wasn't brilliant and it started to creep out of place if it was just dry fitted. So I went with gluing it. The rear section has to be glued first, that's a bit of a tighter fit. And then these frontal gun holding sections go in next. 
You have to take care with this front platform to make sure it lines up with the edges. It's still not perfect, but it's close enough. There are plenty more rails to put on on the top deck and various sort of hidden walkways um, around the side and so on as well. This took me a long time to get these into place. Finally, the extremely delicate ladders were added. And then the whole gun assembly, which is quite heavy because remember it has those big metal weights inside it, could finally be added to the top. The idea is that the weights in the breech should make the gun basically neutral. You should be able to position it and it should stay in whatever position you put it roughly. And there are two small parts that go over the top of that and they just hold it in place. This is the rear section that I mentioned earlier where the lifts go. Now you'll notice a small bug here in the kit. These lifts can't travel up and down the full length freely because they snag on the back of that control uh, room there. You can just see that there in that shot. Ideally I wanted one lift at the top and one fairly near the bottom to so suggest it's uh, been loaded. In the end I just put it below the control room and uh, ignore the fact that it wouldn't be able to go any higher. And to be honest, with those small additions made, that is basically the construction of the Dora finished. I did have to go back and, you know, touch up the paintwork in a few places, but the construction itself is done. So let's have a look now at how I made the terrain. So the Dora, of course, is huge, and I did want to have a little bit of um, space around it for some other um, activity going on. So in the end, I took this uh, piece of wood, which is four foot long and one foot deep. The plastic rail bed doesn't have a lot of contact area, so I think I showed you in an earlier video, I just put some foam underneath that and glued that to the rail bed and the board. I wanted to make a backdrop of a rock face or some cliffs, like we've seen in some of the reference photos. Initially I took some old um, styrofoam for some packaging, started to make a cliff face out of that. Then I realized that was probably quite a bad idea. So I threw that in the bin. I took three pieces of wood, gave them a bit of uh, support. and decided to make some rock face pieces out of plaster. Now I know you can buy rock molds, but they're quite expensive and I'm quite cheap. So I went for the good old tin foil method. So here you get some aluminium foil, kitchen foil. Give it a really good screw up, really tight, so you get lots of texture on it. And then fold up the edges so that you make a tray so that liquid can't escape it. Then you can mix up some plaster. I did a couple of pours of plaster and then I actually moved to Hydrocal, which is much lighter. But the method is the same with both. Mix it up to a nice consistency and throw it into your mold. Once it's dry, you can peel the mold away and it leaves you with a nice rock face texture. You can experiment with different kinds of patterns. So this one here, for example, you can see I've got sort of diagonal striations that um, maybe represent sort of fishes in rock and so on. Here I've got lots of sort of vertical, very tight cracks together. Here are some of the finished pieces. Now this was my first batch and I noticed one problem with these. And that's that they're kind of out of scale. So remember the Dora is 1 72nd scale. Some of the um, texture here is quite um, spread out. 
some quite large plain areas on these rock faces and that kind of makes them a bit out of scale for 172nd scale. For 135th they'd probably be okay but if we compare these with another one where I've given a lot tighter texture I think this looks a, a lot better if you see what I mean. The texture is much more detailed, um, it looks much more to scale. So unfortunately I did have to uh, throw away some of those initial rock faces that I made. I played with the rock faces trying to get them into good positions and then glued them to the wood using some sculptor mould. Once all the rock faces were glued down, there were of course some gaps. They were also filled with small amounts of sculptor mold. And this was the final result once everything had dried. I was really pleased with this, I think it looks pretty good. The next step was to add the ballast because I didn't like the texture which was moulded onto the Hobby Boss um, rail pieces. So I cleaned up the rails. The rails themselves were quite a tight fit so I realised that even if I painted them separately as I tried to insert them into the pieces, the friction would just tear the paint off anyway. So I put them in place and just had to be satisfied with the fact that I'd have to paint them um, integrated with the terrain. I took some of this railway ballast. As always, I bought way too much of this. I bought about four bags and uh, in the end, I think I used about just under one for the entire thing. I started by brushing PVA between the uh, sleepers and adding the uh, ballast on top. Then to be honest I got a bit impatient and I started using a dropper to uh, put some of the watered down PVA there. It was quite hard to make it stick so I had to go over the top with some PVA again, trying to keep the sleepers clear. In reality, most of this will not be seen anyway because the door is so big, but of course it still needs to be there. The front of the diorama was going to be a road where supply trucks and other vehicles would be uh, coming to the Dora. So I got the sculptor mold out again, built up the road and tried to blend it into that ballasted area. While the sculptor mold was still wet, I used my PVA again and tried to blend the edge using the ballast, sticking some of it onto the glue and some of it into the sculptor mold. At the back of the diorama, I knew that this piece of the ground was slightly higher than the, uh, the backdrop. So I tried to make the hills and the sort of uh, the terrain here just high enough that it would uh, it would hide that join between the two pieces. Now for some reason I haven't filmed this, but after painting the roadwork in a brown acrylic paint, I wasn't happy with the texture, so I went over it with some AK acrylic um, dry dry ground texture. Then gave the entire groundwork a coat of uh, black, followed by some XF52 flat earth for the road and the terrain, a medium grey colour for the ballast, on reflection that probably should have been even lighter, and a uh, brown colour for the sleepers. I wasn't going to pick out every single stone, but I did go through and highlight some of them with various shades of grey and um, sort of light um, stone colour to try and give some variation. 
And to help the process along, I gave the entire ballast a dry brush of light grey. Some dark brown paint along with some rust pigments were used to paint the rails. I realised that possibly the rails wouldn't be this rusty because the door wasn't in place for that long, but uh, I used a bit of artistic licence there. Finally, some Vallejo dull aluminium was used to paint the top of the rails. Again, I don't know how polished those rails would be, but uh, they are polished in my uh, diorama. So next up was painting the rock faces, and this was both one of the most fun parts of the terrain and also one of the uh, most terrifying. So I gave the entire rock face a base coat of very light grey, so that was XF19. So light that you can ju only just about see it on the uh, camera. The technique I used is called wet blending, and it uses acrylic paints. Because the plaster and the hydrocal are so porous, I had to really soak the surface first, um, and that came back to bite me later on, because the board warped. But anyway, soak the surface with some water, and then take a medium grey colour, acrylic paint, and basically just sort of apply it to the rock face, somewhere near the top, and let it run down. And it looks quite horrendous at first, like a lot of weathering techniques do. But if it does get too dark, you can always use a brush with some water to remove some of the excess. And of course remember that the tone does change over time. As you can see, I really just played with it, moving the paints around until I got it how I liked it. Trying to make sure that I didn't have any paint um, uh, pooling on the surface. So you can tell here, for example, maybe that I've got the cliff face at maybe a just slightly more than a 45 degree angle, so the water does run downwards on its own. I also used a burnt sienna colour to add some variation in some areas. Just playing around. Some darker patches, some lighter patches. until I got to a situation where I was fairly happy with the results. When that was done, I took some very light grey. This was XF19 lightened with some white, XF2. Dry brushed that heavily over the entire rock face. Trying to catch all of those highlights there. <laughs> 
Static grass was the other major component of the terrain base. Where the road is in the foreground, on the right hand side, I didn't want too much grass. And then I wanted lots behind, just in front of the uh, rock faces. I know this is probably a bit unrealistic because the railway line for the Dora was um, constructed especially for it. So basically I think anywhere near where the railway lines were would just be a muddy, messy work site. But I wanted some grass because muddy, messy work sites are not very visually interesting. We're in 172nd scale, so really that limited me, I thought, to 2mm or 4mm grass. In the end, I did actually add some 7mm grass as well. So the PVA glue went down. I'm not very good at using static grass, but it sort of kind of worked. It's a very, very messy process, that's for sure. I did several layers of that. Now I've made a mistake here with hindsight in that the grass is uh, too thick. I think in the reality, if you go out into uh, nature, there's always sort of patches of dirt or thinner patches of grass in nature. Mine looks a bit too consistent, um, a bit too much coverage. To break up the length of the grass, I put some tufts of 7mm grass in randomly, just pinching them with my hands and sticking them in place. I also tried to pull out some of the grass to give some of those dirt patches that I just mentioned. I then wanted to add some trees using some sea foam. This is great stuff, you might have seen it in some of the other dioramas that I built. Again, you have to bear in mind the scale here, 172 second scale. So I took a few pieces which would be the right size for some trees and some bushes. And I went for three types of scatter. I went for this um, light meadow green scatter. these medium green leaves and then this um, heath green scatter. And the process was fairly simple. I took the unpainted sea foam, dipped it into some slightly watered down PVA glue and then sprinkled one of the scatters over it both from below and above. Sometimes I used a mix, so I scattered the darker uh, heath green from below, for example, and the light green from above to give a bit of sort of light and shade on the bush. And we have some nice looking trees there which would go on our base. Here you can see the rails and the backdrop and to me this is really starting to come together now. I was really happy at this stage of the way that things had turned out. One other thing I did which I didn't um, film just because it's so hard with the size of this base was I gave a light airbrushing to all the static grass. I didn't go for the whole process of um, painting everything black and then um, gradually lightening colours of uh, green because it was just too hard um, with all the other terrain elements around. So instead I started with a medium green colour over the top and then a couple of lighter dry grassy shades. And I think you can see here in this image it has broken up that uniformity of colour. I used a cocktail stick to manually add small bits of PVA glue to some of the bushes and then put some coloured scatter over the top. I don't mind that a lot of this hits the ground because if you look at any sort of flowering bush or tree Lots of flowers lay on the ground around it, so that's absolutely fine. 
Finally, the rock face definitely needed a little bit more um, variation. So I wanted to add not, not a waterfall, but a few areas where water has been sort of seeping out of the, the rocks from the ground above. I took some oil paints, initially a green color. And then when I realized that was a bit too bright, a brown color to turn it down. AK wet effects fluid, which is an enamel, was used to simulate damp areas. I also took this opportunity to basically add a pin wash using a dark oil paint to some of the deepest um, recesses on the rock face. Finally, I wasn't really happy with the road. It was a bit too uniform in color. So I did two levels of dry brushing, one with just pure dark earth and one with dark earth lightened with some buff. And with that, my Dora diorama was complete. I think it was George Lucas who said that movies are never finished, they're only abandoned. And uh, to a certain extent, I feel that way about this Dora diorama. It's been a really long uh, process building this. It's been really fun, but I'm also aware that um, I'm sort of making a decision to stop now, even though there are lots of other things that I could add. Um, the most obvious thing would be uh, perhaps a crew for the Dora. Uh, they're quite hard to find in 170 second scale. Uh, some vehicles on the road, they're nice and easy to find in 120 second scale. Um, I noticed in a few of the reference photos, there are uh, camo nets, which are on some poles at the top of the rock face to presumably give some, uh, some camouflage from, uh, from the air. And a whole host of other things that I could add. But you know, I could easily spend probably another six months um, adding things to this. But I think now is a good time to stop. I'm pretty happy with what I've got really happy with the Dora, fairly happy with the, um, the terrain. There might be a couple of vehicles I'm going to add to the diorama, but that may well be simply a case of I'm building a 170 second scale vehicle rather than putting it on my display shelf. I'm just going to add it to the, uh, to the Dora diorama. So yeah, without further ado, let's have a look at the final pictures.
So there we go, guys. That was my Dora. The first video I did on this was back on the 18th of February. Um, so that's actually basically six months ago, almost to the day. Sometimes it feels like longer than that. I really hope you enjoy these videos and the uh, the building of the, the wagons, the Dora itself and the diorama. I feel like I've learned quite a lot during this. and I've really enjoyed the uh, discussion in the comments here and on my Patreon page as well about the direction the diorama is heading, how it's doing, suggestions and so on. That's been really, really, uh, it's been really great. So thank you guys for all of your comments. As always, I've got a couple more projects already in the pipeline. I've posted a couple of preview images on my Patreon page recently. Um, I think you'll enjoy my next video quite a lot. Um, after my stash video, where you could see that I've got quite a few kits already, I have tried not to buy any more. However, the next video is a new kit, and it's one that you're going to like, I think. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it'll be a nice surprise, hopefully, um, when it's uploaded. So guys, until next time, thank you very much for watching and have fun modeling.